Hi guys, how's it going? Um, let's talk about books. Um, I have a pile. Makes a change. Um, not been picking up a vast amount of graphic novels recently for one reason or another, but I got the obligatory Amazon voucher for Christmas, so I had a look at me various wish lists um, and bought a few, and I've also, in the last kind of month, picked up a few other books. Um, these are not all graphic novels. Um, so graphic novel haul is a slight lie. Um, they might be of interest, maybe they'll be of interest. The ones that are not graphic novels all fall under a particular theme. Um, so let's get cracking. So, first up, the least graphic novel-y thing in the entire pile is this. Uh, Star Wars Before the Awakening uh, by Chris Rucker. Um, if any of you read um, the Shattered Empire mini that came out before the film, um, same writer... Not really anything in the way of visuals. It does say something about being illustrated, but I think it literally has f three illustrations in it, um, which are perfectly nice, but, you know, they're like this. Spoilers. So, there you go. Um, basically, I haven't read this yet, but basically it gives some additional backstory on Ray, uh, Finn, and Poe. Uh, it's supposed to be quite good. It fills in a few blanks, I think. Um... We'll see. Uh, supposed to be good. Um, picked it up. It's quite. It's nothing too hefty. It's a pretty short book, so why not? Um, there's some Star Wars stuff going on here. I can't lie. Uh, this book is a random thing. I got it for Christmas from my mother-in-law. Made me chuckle. It is the Millennium Falcon Haynes Manual. Uh, does anyone outside the UK do you get Haynes manuals? I don't know. Uh, for anyone that's uninitiated, Haynes manuals. Uh, we have them in the UK for cars, and it basically tells you everything you need to know about taking apart and putting back together your car. Um, but they've kind of they also do these kind of ones for fun. It's a Millennium Falcon one. If you need to change the oil on your Millennium Falcon, uh, this will kind of tell you how. Uh, it's got some nice kind of overviews, floor plans, technical diagrams. It's a bit of fun, really, um, but quite interesting nonetheless. Um, so yeah, the Millennium Falcon Haze Bar. If your Millennium Falcon breaks down, give me a shout and I will lend you this book. Uh, next up, still on the Star Wars kick, is a book I picked up for next to nothing. It is the Star Wars The Force Awakens Visual Dictionary. Uh, never really bought any of these types of books before, but I saw this in Tesco. Like I said I was in, on a bit of a Star Wars kick. I've seen The Force Awakens twice now. Um, I just saw this and was like, you know, it was like, I don't know, a fiver or something. It wasn't a lot. It's pretty thin. Um, but it's got some nice kind of overviews of all the different characters and weapons and all this kind of thing. It's quite nice. It's quite a nice book. There's Ray. Um, it's just a bit of a, it's a nice little thing to skim through. I've kind of read it now. Um... I'm pretty enthusiastic about anything Star Wars at the moment, so The Force Awakens Visual Dictionary, there are loads of books like this for Star Wars. Um, I just bought the other visual dictionaries, I could have got a load of books, but the other ones were all kind of for the original trilogy and the prequels, and I just, as soon as I kind of opened a page and saw old Hayden Christensen and the Binksmeister, I was a bit put off, so I just got this one. Last up for the totally non-graphic novel books, and the last of my Star Wars stuff, uh, probably the one I'm most enthusiastic about, uh, and it is the, it's quite hefty, it's The Art of the Force Awakens. Uh, I got a few of these um, before I got into comics and graphic novels, I used to, I don't think collect is the word, but I used to periodically buy art of books, I'm a big fan of kind of concept art, and I've got... Um, the concept art books for the prequels, which are probably more enjoyable than the films. Um, and I've also got I got one for the Matrix. I've got ones for a few different video games. Um, I really like them. They're really nice books. Um, I've thumbed through this, and it's um, it's pretty nice. If you if you like kind of concept art and seeing you know the stuff that they do to kind of formulate ideas, I suppose, then this is a good book. Um, What's particularly nice about this one is it kind of follows a little bit of the 
the development of the story as you go through. So you can kind of see the early designs for some characters and, and kind of see and read about, you know, the kind of discussions that they were having at the time. And you can kind of see how long it took them to finalise designs like Kylo Ren, which is quite interesting. Uh, it's a pretty nice book. It's pretty thick. Not the cheapest. I think this is about £25. I paid on Amazon, which I think at the time was about as cheap as you're going to get it. Uh, US cover price is forty dollars and forty nine ninety five Canadian. So I actually paid full blown retail because it's twenty five quid. Um, but if you're a fan of this type of book, if you've bought this kind of book before and you're into the Force Awakens, then I'd probably suggest giving it a whirl. It's very nice, nice art on front and back. Um, yeah, the art of the Force Awakens. So graphic novels. Um, presented to you in no particular order but the smallest first is a bit of a random pickup it is uh, Lazarus book two again by Greg, Greg Rucker um, I bought book one uh, just on a bit of a whim I think having heard good things about it um, I bought it from my local comic shop ages ago and it sat on my shelf for ages one of those books that I kept thinking I need to get around to reading that and didn't um, for whatever reason it just wasn't really screaming at me on the shelf and then one night I just thought right sod it I'll read it and really really enjoyed it really enjoyed it thought it was very well done um, art style nothing to kind of blow you away but kind of works for the story and is perfectly nice um, but was really kind of taken in by the story um, read it you know in a night or whatever I thought I must read more of that and then didn't it's taken me ages to pick up another one. They do some pretty nice hard covers, but I can't really be bothered. I pick up a lot of hard covers, so I think I'm just going to keep reading it in this format for the time being. Um, standard image trade. Nothing particularly uh, exciting about it. Uh, nothing in the way of extras or anything like that. Um, but it's very nice. If you've not read Lazarus and you've heard good things about it, then I, I would say give it a whirl. You can pick up these trades for... for very little. A few quid, a few dollars. Um, it's essentially, if you're not familiar, uh, it's kind of like in the future, I suppose. The world is kind of overseen by a bunch of powerful families. And within these families, they have a, a person who is like a... I think they're actually referred to as a Lazarus. Sorry, it's been a while since I read that first trade, um, basically this follows the particular, they're like a super soldier basically kind of thing um, and this basically follows the story of one of them um, who has a slightly improbable name Forever something or other um, which is the only criticism I have of the entire thing because Forever is not a name uh, spoilers looks like that hope you can see that um, it's nice it does have a quite a particular style. It's quite dark and gritty. Um, it's good. Oh, I gave you a fairly terrible description of it, so look it up, um, and you'll get a much better synopsis. Um, but it's good. It's good stuff. Uh, next up, we have a book that I think I'm right in saying completes my trade run of it, and that's Volume 4 of Thor, The God of Thunder. This is The Last Days of Midgard. Um... Collects issues 19 to 25, uh, written by Jason Arad, Aaron. Um, art by Isad Ribic, I think. Yes. Um, most people know about this run. It was very, very good. I think this is the last trade. I think it finished at 25. Um, I've got the other three. Um, I've not actually read volume two. I've read volume... Uh, volume three, sorry. I've read one and two. It's really good stuff. And I've been reading... Um, uh, the Mighty Thor. Um, yeah, it's very good. Um, there's not a lot I can really say about it. I, they're publishing it now in some larger collected volumes. I wouldn't be at all surprised if they do an omnibus at some point in the future. Um, I think they'll kind of milk it for everything that they can. Um, so we'll see. If there was an omnibus in the future, I might trade. Um, I don't mind these trades, but they're not particularly spectacular. Um, but yeah, I think this completes my run. I'm trying to remember when I started reading. It got renumbered, didn't it? I think Thor God of Thunder finished. 
And then we got a number one issue where it was Miss Thor. And it carried on from there. And now it's renumbered again with the Mighty Thor. I think that's all correct. Um, yeah, I don't think I have any more of this to get in trade form. And next up we have... Uh, Okay. We have Mad Woman of the Sacred Heart by Joe Dorowski and Mobius. Um, I paused because I was trying to think what on earth I was going to say about this. Um, I bought this recently. Um, this particular copy is not in very good condition. Um, you probably can't really tell, but it arrived a bit banged up. I don't know. You probably can't see that. It's it's not great, so I, uh, I had a word with the... Uh, vendor and they're sending me another copy um, I don't know a lot about this book, I've been on a bit of a Joe Dorowski kick recently um, it's kind of part of my library that I'm trying to beef up um, and anything that's kind of got Mobius on it as well seems like it would be worth a go um, so this is a bit of a random volume that I don't expect a lot of people to have heard of um, if you have read it feel free to comment below um, I think it's pretty mature, uh, readership wise. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't really know anything about it in particular other than literally the synopsis that I read. Um, but it looks interesting and I'm trying to branch out a little bit. Um, so yeah, Joe Dorowski and Mobius is Mad Woman of the Sacred Heart. Nice book, quite thick, quite nicely presented. Like I say, it's just this this particular copy is a little bit tatty. If I had to keep it, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. I didn't pay that much for it. Um, UK cover price is 17 quid, um, and I pay about £7 less than that, plus delivery. Um, so not an expensive one. Um, but yeah, looking forward to reading it. Um, yeah. Next up, I said I was on a little bit of a Joe Dorowski kick, and we have... Uh, Meta Baron's Genesis Kastaka is how I'm going to choose to pronounce that. Might be wrong. Um, written by Joe Dorowski, art by Das Pastoras. Sorry about that, Das, if I've just really massacred your name, but there we go. Um, published by Humanoids, um, which is really my preferred publisher for anything Joe Dorowski related. Um, again, very nicely presented book. Nice uh, bookmark ribbon. Um, this, I believe, is a sort of a, um, it's not really a prequel, um, to the Meta Barons, and Meta Baron, I think I'm right in saying this character first introduced in The Inkle, written by Joe Dorowski, and art famously by Mobius, um, and there's then a Meta Barons standalone book, um, which talks all, obviously all about the Meta Barons, which I've got, and then this is a kind of a, like I said, it's not exactly a prequel, but this is, um, basically looking at their ancestors so it's a book about the ancestors of the Meta Barons um, again you may not be particularly familiar with Joe Dorowski um, give him a look up uh, it's a very interesting stuff um, I'm probably going to have a video or two coming up um, including a particular review video that may be of interest um, but it's an area of my, like I said, my library, my collection. I don't like using that word really, but um, the library um, that I want to kind of beef up on. Um, very interesting stuff. Very, very different to, you know, your Marvel and your DC stuff. And in a way, kind of different to the sort of indie stuff you get these days. Um, but very, very interesting. So I'm looking forward to reading that. Happy to have it in my collection. It's uh, the, the first edition of it came and went a little while ago couldn't get hold of it for a while and then this is the latest edition very nice book not particularly uh, thick not particularly cheap um, I can't remember how much I paid for it but uh, about 20 pounds something like that um, but a very nice book and last but by no means least a book I've seen on a few people's recent graphic novel haul videos especially around Christmas time um, it's the one that nobody knows how on earth to put on their bookcase and it's the private eye um, Brian K. Vaughan, Marcus Martin um, I did start reading this electronically um, 
so for anyone that doesn't know they basically published this themselves online it was supposed to be a 100% online only never going to be uh, collected in a real physical book uh, series and you basically paid whatever you wanted so you could pay like I think nothing per issue or you could pay a million pounds per issue it was entirely up to you um, I chucked him I think a couple of quid an issue um, but I think I didn't really enjoy I loved the story I thought it was great and really liked the art I was really into it for the first two or three issues but I didn't really enjoy reading it online like on a web page I didn't um, or however it was presented, PDFs or whatever, it just didn't really. I didn't like that that way of reading it particularly, and I I, I stopped reading it. Um, it wasn't like a big conscious decision. I just went away from it for a while, and then I saw that it was finally going to be collected. I think they sort of got bullied by uh, by Image into doing it. I think Robert Kirkman basically insisted they wanted to do something else, and he said, oh, "I'll do it if you uh, agreed to do a collection of the Private Eye." Um, but yeah. It's an interesting format. I think this is why everyone's been trying to figure out how to position it on their shelves. Um, Story-wise, um, I think I'm basically correct in saying that essentially the story centers on um, the cloud, in, as in people's private data that exists on the internet. Suddenly, like everything gets exposed, so everyone's kind of you know everyone's filthy browsing history gets uh gets uh, becomes you know public public property along with you know photos and documents everything that's in the cloud basically um, and this kind of takes place in and around or after the fallout of that and its implications on society and um, how everything is off like everyone kind of wears a mask so that people can go back to having some degree of privacy stuff like that it's 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 very interesting and it's very nice to look at um Spoilers, and I will attempt to get this on the screen in an acceptable way. Um, how's that? <laughs> oh, it looks like that. Bit of glare there. It's very nice looking. It's very nicely coloured. Um, it looks really nice. Very nice book. Um, it's got a fifty dollar cover price. I think I paid twenty odd. I can't remember now. It wasn't too much, I think it was about 20 some odd pounds from Amazon, um, not ridiculous and it is a lovely book it's just kind of how it sits on your shelf I guess it's got to go like that with the end sticking out But who cares um, so yeah, that is The Private Eye, Brian K. Vaughan very much looking forward to re finishing reading that series um, that's it, that is all the books uh, some graphic novels, some not but Star Wars-y stuff gotta love a bit of Star Wars-y stuff um, so that's it um, hopefully I'll be back soon with some more graphic novels um, I've got some review videos in the works um, but yeah I, I think I'm trying to work on a more regular kind of way that I can pick up graphic novels um, yep. if you try and buy all kind of omnibuses that's very expensive Especially in this country at the moment, the exchange rate between us and the United States is terrible. Um, so you're paying kind of like full blown retail price for omnibuses, which I haven't got enough enthusiasm for them to be honest. Um, I'm, as you probably see by some of these, I'm kind of trying to branch out a little bit and read some different things, and um, I want to kind of carry on doing that. And some of them are less expensive than others, so it might mean I can pick books up a bit more regularly. But I'm also trying to read more stuff, so. That kind of slows it down, but yeah, I want to kind of have a regular intake of new things, which should lead to more regular videos. That's the aim. Anyway, let me know what you think about any of these, any of these you might have picked up. If anyone's got any opinions about Jodorowsky stuff, do please feel free to share. Um, if anyone has bought a ridiculous amount of Star Wars crap in the last month and a half, feel free to share also. Um, please uh, like, comment and subscribe, and I will see you again soon. Cheers.